Hi everyone, it's Carl's Guide Do It Yourself. Today I'm going to show you how to solve a problem with DJR valve in this 2014 Volvo XC60 2 liter diesel engine in cheap way. Common problem with stuck EGR valve blocked exhaust gases flow through EGR cooler. I will show you step by step how I handle with this problem saving a ton of money and you can do it at home using all common tools really so stay with us. First we have to diagnose the problem. Car was running in limp mode, lack of power and the engine was choking while driving. Plug in OBD scanner to check any faults. Turn ignition on and what we have here? Two faults. P04D900, which means that the exhaust gases flow is too low. Second one, P241300, means that EGR system performance has got general fault. Have a look on live data and see EGR valve position. When engine is off, EGR valve should be closed, but as we can see EGR is almost fully open. Even when I start the engine, it seems like it's stuck. I will do short test by operating valve manually. So valve is trying to move a little bit, but he can't. EGR is over here. Access to him looks pretty nice. I know from the owner that EGR valve with the EGR cooler was replaced already once on warranty 3 years ago. Also I know that Volvo has got huge issue with this element they can't handle with stocking EGR valve cooler and it looks like it happened again. Let's take off the top engine cover. Remove that plastic clips. Under EGR valve there is plastic cover that hiding EGR valve arm. If we remove that cover we can see if the EGR valve is moving or if it's stuck. So let's do this. Take small flathead screwdriver and pry plastic clips at the sides. Now we can remove it. There is actuator arm and EGR valve shaft. And as you can see I can't move it, it's stuck. It should turn freely. So we have to take out that EGR valve with the cooler from the engine. In order to get more access over there, first thing we need to do is to remove few parts around. First will be air filter housing and to do that we have to detach wiring from. Ok, now loosen jubilee clip on air hose and disconnect plug from air mass flow sensor. Remove top and bottom hoses from air filter housing, then gently raise it up. It will couple. Next, we have to drain cooling system because coolant circulates inside EGR valve cooler. We don't want to make a mess, so I will show you how to drain coolant from one place without spilling it. Take new large rubbish bag, drag this bag under front bumper to lower cooling holes. Surround the holes with the bag, lift up all the open edges of the bag, like so. Now we can remove metal clip that holds the holes on the radiator housing and remove it. 
then loosen coolant reservoir cup. All coolant will drain straight into this rubbish bag. When it's all out, plug the hose back on place. Now you can close top of the bag with cable tie and slowly pull out from under the car. To drain rubbish bag, take empty container, hang the bag above and cut the corner creating a funnel. It's that simple. Still we need more room, we have to loosen that wiring loom channel and screw two bolts. One above and one from a side. Detach two hoses and unscrew metal bracket. Now unscrew two bolts that holding metal pipe to EGR valve, then disconnect EGR valve plug. Take off bottom cooling hose that goes to EGR. Unscrew Torx head bolt from a side. And disconnect more plugs from the top. We have to remove vacuum reservoir and to do that we have to take off vacuum valve that cover one of the bolts. There are four vacuum hoses and it's worth to mark them with dots, like so. Well, finally only one will be disconnected. Now unscrew three bolts. And put reservoir on the top. Now we can see EGR valve cooler. Remove vacuum valve actuator, just two bolts and slide it out from that pin. Cooler is holding by three bolts, two at the top and one at the bottom. Bottom one is covered behind that hose, so remove it. Take 10 mm socket and unscrew bottom bolt. Okay, then two at the top. And it's free, wiggle a little bit and it's out. Have a look on it, right now it's fully open. This arm while turning is moving back and forward valve shaft. This one is blocked, let's try to move it. Wow, it's back in position. It's moving fine, but at the end it locks. Let's check the cooler, we have to unscrew those bolts. Whoa, cooler looks really bad, carbon is everywhere. Exhaust gases are passing through those small slots and because they are too small, carbon deposited on the walls causing clogging. Result, EGR coolant is completely blocked. That cause exhaust gases flow too low and I see two solutions for that. First one, wash everything, remove all carbon grime. Second one, replace those parts. I choose first option because I will save a ton of money. Before we start cleaning everything, wear breathing mask to protect your lungs and safety glasses to protect your eyes. First I would like to clean EGR valve. To do that, you can use EGR cleaner spray or carburetor cleaner and soft metal wire brush. Spray down everything, then wait until it gets moistened and you can use some brush like so. After that I will scrape all gasket from the edges, I use rotary tool with soft brush. Rust on actuator arm cause valve sticking, so I will remove it gently. Now it's moving perfect. Time for EGR cooler. 
slots are too small to clean it mechanically, so only liquid cleaning. Also I use EGR cleaner, I fill it up with it and leave it for a few hours, but results were really poor. I repeat it, but now soaking time was 24 hours. Result was better, but still far away from new. So I decide to use something stronger. Pure acetone. Cheap and easy to buy. Again, I fill it up and leave it for a few hours. Result? Definitely better. Alright, last try. Fill it up and leave it for 24 hours. And check this out, now I see all slots, when I blow air inside it's getting out straight away. Now I can degrease the surface. Unfortunately I could not find a set of EGR gaskets. It comes in a set with EGR, so I have to use old gaskets and engine silicone sealant. Now apply small amount of sealant on both surfaces, put gasket on place, wipe it surplus of sealant. Now we can join both parts and tighten all bolts. Last thing to do, we can apply small amount of brake anti seize grease on actuator arm. As you can see this gasket will be used again, so clean the surface, same thing with this one, after that apply small amount of engine silicone sealant on both of them. Alright, time for fitting. Align properly EGR valve on place. A quick look at the previous position. Now we can tighten top bolt because we have pretty good access to it. To prevent losing next bolt somewhere in engine bay, I suggest you to use a piece of paper. Put it inside the socket, then press bolt in. It will be definitely harder to lose that bolt when we have accidental touch something around. Do same trick with bottom bolt, then tighten it all the way. Next, fit cooling hose and set hose clip on place. Now fit vacuum valve actuator. And tighten two bolts. Put vacuum reservoir on place. vacuum hose back on place and valve, like so. Now tighten all three bolts. Good, connect plugs and set harness on place. Now we can tighten pipe which goes at front the EGR valve. Mm -hmm. 
and the back pipe as well. Tighten it by hand, then torque everything down with the ratchet. Install another cooling hose and hose clip. Time for metal bracket. Tighten it and install two hoses on place. Now small Torx head bolt under EGR valve. And tighten wiring loom channel with two bolts. Connect EGR plug. Now we can install air filter housing. Gently put it on place and push it in on all mounts. Install wiring on place. Connect air mass flow sensor plug. Now small air hose at front of the air filter housing. Ok, it's on place. Tighten air hose clip. Last step before we start the engine. Fill up the coolant reservoir. After engine warms up, then cools down, we have to check coolant level and if necessary fill it up. Now we can clean codes from ECU. Now moment of truth. Will it pass through the test? Start it and... Whoa, it's working. Oof, everything is fine. Finally, we can install EGR valve actuator arm cover and engine top cover. After that repair, engine is running perfect. If you like it, thumbs up and subscribe. Job done. Thanks for watching.